Now, turning to slide 44, what are we seeing here? These are two MMS messages. Uh, each is a photograph. One photograph is of Chad Daybell standing next to a portrait of Jesus Christ. The other is a photograph of Alex Cox standing next to the same uh, portrait. And then um, each of them sent a MMS message to Lori Vallow uh, attached to those photographs. Could you read to us the re- into the record the uh, MMS text sent to Lori Vallow from Alex Cox? Line 75 from Alex Cox to Lori Vallow, look at the bubbies. Okay. And um, this was a, a photograph of Chad Daybell? Correct. Okay. And... Um, and it was Chad next to a picture of Jesus. Yes. Okay. And could you read into the record uh, line 76 of the MMS text message from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow? Line 76, photograph of Alex Cox, uh, two exalted beings. Okay. And uh, why did you include these in your summary for the jury? For two reasons. One, to show uh, Chad Daybell and Alex Cox uh, together on August 7th of 2019. And in terms of the religious concepts that were uh, at play in this investigation, the reference to Alex Cox being an exalted being. And that reference to Alex Cox being an exalted being was sent by Chad Daybell to Loy Vallow. Correct. Is there any other reason why you included this particular section? No. Okay. Turning to additional communication on August 7, 2019, can you, is line, slide 45, why did you include this section in your summary? I included this mainly because of the last text in this, in this string, which indicates that, um, Lori Vallow and Melanie Boudreau uh, believe their children to be demons. Okay. Can you read into the record the text communication on uh, page 45? Yes, line 1399 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. I love you. Taking Braxy home now, I'll check on her. Line 1394 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. She is asleep. She put a bunch of holes in the walls and doors. Definitely had demons helping her, probably a thousand. Line 1392 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Mel wants us to come up there tomorrow, but I said next Thursday to Sunday. What do you think? Line 1391 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. We are both so tired of taking care of demons. We are weary. Please ask the Lord to take them. In your re- in context of your review of the iCloud and the evidence in this case, what significance did that have um, from an investigative point of view? The significance is the designation of these children as being demons, being possessed by some dark entity. And in light of what happened with J.J. and Tylee, it is relevant uh, to the investigation in its totality. Okay. And looking at line 1391, who is it um, asking that the Lord take them? It's a reference to their children. Okay. And who is making the request that please ask the Lord to take them? Lori Vallow. Now, turning to the next lines of communications as reflected on slide 46, Why did you include this set of communications in the summary? Um, This is the first of a number of pages of a text string that chronicles a fight between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell in reference to a trip that Lori Vallow was taking to visit Chad Daybell in Rexburg, Idaho. Um, Was that trip able to occur? Yes. Okay. And so you included this to sort of document the conversation surrounding that trip? 
yes and the issues that arose with that trip. Okay. Um, now, let's, let's read those into the record, and then we'll talk about those issues. Line 1369, text from Lori Vallow to Melanie Boudreau. We just had a big fight, probably no go on next week. Line 1368 from Melanie Boudreau to Lori Vallow, are you okay? Line 1367 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow, my heart is crushed, but I will never stop loving you. Line 1364 from Melanie Boudreau to Lori Vallow, I love you. If you need to talk at all, just call me. I don't sleep anyways. Hang in there, babe. It was a hard day. Don't let the dumb things here get to you. You know who you are. Praying for our hearts to be made full and for the Lord to execute all things expeditiously. Before we read the remainder of that um, sort of text exchange or the, uh, surrounding that trip, why did you include these particular texts in your summary? They affirm the relationship between Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow. This is the first instance of a fight between the two that I was able to observe in the iCloud um, and the subsequent texts uh, indicate the, the fullness of, of that particular conversation as it relates to this fight. Okay. Um, and what about the phrase, for the Lord to execute all things expeditiously? What did that phrase, uh, how was that phrase um, important to this text communication in context to the iCloud as you saw it? No object is speculative calling for him to speculate. i overrule that. <clears throat> Melanie Boudreau and Lori Vallow were very close. Melanie was aware from prior text communications of the Lord's plan for them, and that is a reference to executing that plan. Now, continuing with that conversation, can you, um, or that, that situation as reflected in the iCloud, could you read into the record the text from page 47? Line 1348 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Missing you. Heading to the girl's funeral. Emma was her teacher and is one of the speakers. This is very difficult, but I will abide by your request not, or request to not talk. I hate causing you pain because I love you more than ever. Line 1345 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. You're the best. I hope your day goes well. I adore you. Line 1303 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Absolutely excruciating to be cut off from you. I love you. If you could, could you read to us um, the, the next few lines on uh, continued on the line slide 48? Yes, line 1302. From Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Good night. Saddest day of my life. Line 1300. From Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Grandpa Keith is here. I am supposed to warn you that you are unprotected. The angels are angry that you are ignoring me. I told him to go back, but he says he isn't allowed to. I'm honestly not trying to manipulate you to respond. I understand that you need your space, but they say you have cut me off and the protection I built around your house is gone. I love you and don't want you getting attacked. They said that if you at least give me a thumbs up emoji, it will restore our connection enough to give some protection. Line 1299 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. I love you. Line 1298 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Thank you, my love. I will get things restored. So why did you include these particular communications that are reflected in slide 47 and 48 in the summary um, of your review? I included them to demonstrate first the argument that had taken place regarding Lori Vallow coming to Rexburg to visit Chad Daybell, 
and secondly, to demonstrate how Chad Daybell used religious concepts to manipulate others. And um, throughout those text communications um, from around 11.30 in the morning on August 8th through around 10.02 on August 8th, I see multiple communications from Chad to Lori. Were there many communications from Lori back to him? No, as is shown, she was ignoring him up until the text uh, at 9.53 p.m. Okay. And, um, and so is line 13 his response to being ignored? Line 1300? Line 1300, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And what significance did Grandpa Keith have to you, if any, in context of that early communication? It's my understanding that Grandpa Keith is deceased, so it's Chad Daybell claiming that a deceased relative was visiting him to... Uh, I'm going to have Jack move to strike. He's speculating. Sustained. Okay. So the phrase Grandpa Keith is here. Um, is that uh, that communication was from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow? Yes. Um, and then the rest of that, um, Chad indicates he's supposed to warn her that she's not protected. Correct. And in order to provide the protection, she's got to give him a thumbs up or a, a some sort of sign? Yes. And does Lori Vallow do that? Yes. Okay. Is there anything else of significance in that particular set of text communications? No. Moving to um, some communication on August 9th, 2019. Do you see those reflected in slide 49? I do. Okay. Can you? Um, let's, what significance did this line of communication have um, in terms of your summary? So there's this slide, and it, it, this text string continues into the subsequent slide. This is significant in that it is uh, an occasion where we see. Um, Chad Daybell designating someone as a dark spirit and Lori Vallow disagreeing with Chad Daybell's designation and making her own designation as to that individual status. Okay. And does it show any pushback or disagreement from Chad on her own designation? He subsequently agrees to her designation. Okay. Could you please read into the record slide 49 and 50? Line 1232. From Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell, can you check Nathan Pacheco, see what level he is? Is he light? Line 1231 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Also Mike Stroud, Mel G thinks he went dark, but I think he's light. Line 1229 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. I will check those two. Line 1226 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Any guesses on Pacheco? Line 1225 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Just tell me. Line 1224 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. 4.1 dark. And slide 50. Line 1222 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Nope, I get 5.1 light. Part of our team. Line 1221 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. We'll go with your answer. Line 1220 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Why? What's wrong with your picker? Line 1219 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. What about Mike Stroud? Seriously. Line 1218 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. He's done a great infiltration job. Um, and so you indicated that this reflected an exchange on rating people um, why did you include this particular exchange? Traditionally, Chad Daybell was the one who would designate people as he would give these light or dark scores. This is an occasion where Lori Vallow disagrees with his score and designates her own score. Okay. And, um, and again, it, it appears that Chad Daybell specifically said, we'll go with your answer. Correct. Turning to the next uh, set of communications from August 10th, um, 
Can you tell us why you included the communications that are reflected on slide 50? Yes, so this is a fairly lengthy text string that encompasses this slide and the next five slides. I included these communications because they are critically important in providing clarity as it relates to what ultimately happened to Tylee and JJ. Okay. Let's start with, could you read into the record slide 51? Line 1177, please check JJ. He just, I'm sorry, line 1177 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Please check JJ. He just woke up saying crazy stuff and won't go back to sleep. He is talking to Blake. It's weird. Line 1175 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. JJ is still JJ. I am told his spirit recognizes Blake is evil and is unsettled by him. Line 1172 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Hi, my love. How is JJ now? Line 1171 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. He's better. He was just up talking nonsense for like two hours last night. I'm sure they were bugging him. Is he at zero yet? I miss you. Do you want to read the next one and, and circle back, or do you want to take a minute to talk about why you included this set? Why don't we read the entire okay. text string in its totality and then circle back? Okay. So turning to slide 52, could you please read slide 52 into the record? Line 1170 from Chad Daybell to Lori Ballow. Yes, he's at zero. He was probably, he probably was partly through the veil, talking to people both light and dark. Line 1169 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Maybe he was talking to the real Blake. Line 1167 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Yes, that was the real Blake. And uh, continuing on the conversation in line 53, at uh, slide 53. Line 1165 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Do you think there is a perfectly orchestrated plan to take the children? And we just have to wait for it to be carried out. Line 1164 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. I feel lost, like I should be doing something to help. Line 1161 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. There is a plan being orchestrated for the children. I was shown last night how it fit together, but it has been taken from my mind, of course. Slide 54. Line 1159 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. What should I be doing? Line 1158 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. You are doing everything right, my love. The Lord told me she is right on track. He said to just keep resolving the telestial issues so you are unencumbered and fully free. Line 1155 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. That actually feels good that J.J. was talking to the real Blake, getting close. When I was sitting across from him eating bacon, I sensed he was barely attached to his body. In slide 55. Line 1125 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. You are so incredible. In many ways, your mission has barely begun. Line 1124 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. As long as it ends with you, it's all good. Line 1123. From Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. Yes, cheek to cheek, loin to loin. It isn't very far away, my love. Line 1120. From Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. I wish I could see with you and be cheek to cheek. And so let's go back. There's one more slide in the text. Use the next one. Okay. Line 1118 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. 
There's been no question asked. Moving on to read line uh, slide 56. Could you read that in the record? I'll have a ruling on my objection. Well, the objection was there's no question, and so council just asked a new question, so it's resolved. Thank you. Line 11, 18. From Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow, I seriously cannot stop crying. I was allowed to feel my own emotions I will experience as you sing to them, and the love, admiration, and reverence I have for you are indescribable. Everything we do together is going to be spectacular. Line 1117, from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. I can't wait. Literally can't wait. I have no patience. I want you now. Line 1113, from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. I'm certainly your biggest fan. I love you, Lily. Hold on, my sweet angel. We are so close to the finish line. Line 1112 from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. I'm trying. Line 1111 from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow. We'll make it. <laughs> 